Where did all the good men go? It seems like we just got a shortage of good men out here. I but if you think there's no good guys left, this could in fact be your fault. And I'm not saying that to be a dick or mean or anything like that. I'm just a huge believer from my experience of teaching literally tens of thousands of men and women how to date. That women today, like I said, they're not ladylike. They, they walk around, they want to dress skimpy, they want to put on uh, enough makeup to where they start looking like a transsexual. They, they want to wear fake this, fake that, fake hair on their head, fake eyelashes. Uh, <clears throat> where they look like they dressed up for Halloween night. They, uh, they get in surgery, they get their lips blown up, they get in their, uh, their butts done, their breasts done, nothing's real anymore. And the rewards for men in these fields, especially in marriage, is so much less than it used to be. And the costs and dangers are so high that I think a lot of men are opting out. And we can definitely see this, particularly online, where at least men can kind of get on and speak up. You see that on the Reddit, uh, you know, like in some of the um, forums on Reddit or other places where men can actually talk about some of these issues and give their opinions in a, in a more free manner. And I think guys just feel like there's just not that much in it for them. Um, if you're a man and you have kids, you t in today's world, you're expected to earn a living. You're expected to come home, clean the house and fix, you know, do the dishes and everything. And of course, if you're not able to do all of that, you're called a loser, you're called names. And then if you do actually do all those things, then you're called a beta male. So it just, <laughs> you know, you really can't win. Women today are not ladylike whatsoever. Women today will meet a man and sleep with him the same day she met him. Women today want to be like men. They want to meet someone, impress them, sleep with them, and um, not experience any kind of consequences for it. And I see a lot of men actually in a movement today that don't even see what the value of a woman in it is anymore. And that's really scary. They feel like if a woman acts just like a man, wants to compete with me like a man, but doesn't provide any feminine value or benefits, or isn't helpful at all, then what's really the point of a woman or a wife anymore? Okay, I wanna go back now to what you were talking about before with, with marriage specifically and how that's become not as, um, you know, it's just a better deal for women than it is for men. And so much of that has to do, as you were explaining, that it's not as though men can um, um, be primarily responsible for providing for their family, although they're still expected to do that as much as they ever yes, were. Yeah, in fact, the Pew but, Research but, Center did a study, and they found that when that the majority of people still expect men to provide for families, particularly, you know. Right, and 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 that's all fine, except when you're adding on to that. Oh, and by the way, when you come home, you're not going to have any moment to breathe, and you're going to have no time for yourself, and there's no place where you can go as a man and be alone with men because well, those spaces are gone. Yada yada yada. So basically, you're a slave to your life. If all the women were not whores and willing to lay down or, and flirt with a married man or a man in a relationship and you know this kind of stuff wouldn't happen men wouldn't be able to do this kind of stuff they wouldn't be able to cheat on you as often they wouldn't be able to you know run off or, or sleep with a woman they just met if the woman wouldn't be willing to do it so instead of running around blaming men you know men are only going along with what women have allowed. Now, TV has men looking like a bunch of dorks. Um, we have all this awful stuff about men, and men who are married just seem to be kind of not worth a lot of respect. Um, men lose a lot of friends. Um, they aren't, you know, we used to think, oh, these, these abusive men, they're always keeping women from going out. Well, now it's the women who are abusive, mm -hmm. and if, it, if men even were, I don't know. But now women, you know, men don't have as many friends. And then everybody blames them and says, well, men just don't talk. Well, they would have talked, but all the male spaces, like you were saying before, and like you pointed out in one of your articles, is they don't have any male spaces anymore. And I think that's a really big piece of that's mm -hmm. missing. Um, if we don't have male space, you know, what we've done is we've retreated men who are married. Oh, you'll have a man cave down in the basement or the dirty area of the house in the garage. Um, it was, I just think that being married for men means that there's just a lot of freedoms and things that they don't have anymore. So let's go back 
like 50 years. Let's go back to your, your grandparents and your great grandparents. Everybody think about your great grandparents. Do you think, um, and I'm generalizing here, typically they were married when they had children. And I want you to think about this. Do you think that when your great grandmother met your great grandfather, the first day she met him, she slept with him? Probably not. Back then, women were ladylike. They wore dresses, they covered their bodies, they had a man court them. You know, then they, if they were gonna be with that man, they typically wanted to be married to that man before they had their children or whatnot. Or if they had a child with that man, they got married afterwards. And women from those times, like your great grandmother, probably only have slept with one or two partners in their whole life. I know female acquaintances my age that have slept with 60, 70, 80 men, five men a year since the age of 16, 15. You know, that adds up, believe it or not. And they don't see nothing wrong with that. Men have the most to lose. So I think when I, we talk about the cost benefit for men, men have to weigh it more heavily than a woman. Women can just get a divorce. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we know that women initiate 70 something percent of those divorces. And they do it because they know that they ultimately can get something if they have assets usually they're either going to be split equally or she's going to get more if they have children she doesn't really need to worry that she's going to not have any custody mm -hmm. she's going to at least get half if not the full full custody um and so i just think there are a lot of things in today's today's political climate and legal climate where men have to really weigh these things ultimately feminism has made it much harder for women to have what they want most in life which is a family which is love ultimately and men are actually freed up to do whatever they want to in life and not have to be attached to a woman or be obligated to marriage. So in the end, feminism is actually hurting women more than men. And this is why I ultimately think feminism needs to go. There's too many women that are deceitful today. They lie, they deceitful, they whores, they want sexual attention, and uh, they're insecure. Why are men just wanting to Stay away from women, far, far away, not marry, not commit, not have children, and potentially even just pump and dump. Well, you got it right here. You continue with this feminist movement, never ending demands on men, constant blaming, shaming, entitled attitude. You wanna to continue to compete with men instead of just be with men and be feminine, be beautiful, be a woman. If you wanna do that, kiss your prospects for a marriage and a committed man goodbye.